Hello everyone, I hope everything is going well with you. So if this is your first video at my channel, then welcome. I'm really happy that you are here and I'd much appreciate your support by hitting the thumbs up button in that video and also consider subscribing to my channel so you can be aware of my future uploads. Okay, so in that video, I'm going to explain the args and the key worded arguments thing that you always see in any Python function. So if you ever programmed with the Python programming language, then you probably saw the double asterisk sign near the word of the key args and also the asterisk sign before the args word. So I'm going to explain why do we see this and what is the idea behind that. And I'm going to give real examples when I use it personally, so it is going to be quite interesting and let's dive into it. Okay, so before we really dive into real example, I just want to point out that if you see the args and then the key w args before the asterisk signs, this doesn't mean that those are the names that you must use, okay? Those are basically conventions that are typically used in each Python program. So if I would go here and change this to something like words or anything else, this will work, okay? So those are just conventions that you have to use so the other developer that is reading your program could understand why you are using this. Okay, so let's delete everything from here and dive into real example where the asterisk and the double asterisk sign could be useful. But before we actually explain why this is necessary, let me write here a simple program that is going to calculate my age based on the given year of birth. So let me write here current year equals to 2020. And let me write here a function that is called get age. And then we will accept here year of birth. Actually, let me change this to YOB just for making it shorter. So this will be year of birth. And then we will go here and then return current year minus YOB, okay? And then, you know what, besides return, we will change this to print to make our lives easier. And then we will go here with get age and then I will write here some random year. And if I go here and execute that program, we should not see any surprises in the results. We should see 24 and this is perfect. Now, if I was to receive multiple years of births for some multiple persons, then I will probably go with something like YOB1 and YOB2 and then YOB3. And let me actually delete everything from here. And in that case, it might be a better idea to return a list with all the ages. So I will go here and write current year minus YOB1. Let's make that separated. And current year minus YOB2. And then we will go and do that for the three as well. And now it might be a better idea to change this function's name to get ages. And if I go with get ages and provide here three years like this, then this should work as well. But you could understand that this is not best practice because if I was have to multiple persons, but not exactly three persons. Well, this is where the single asterisk sign could come in and be extremely helpful. And let me show you how it could be extremely helpful. So let me delete everything from that function again. And this time I will receive a parameter and I will name it asterisk yob. Now, when I go ahead and do this, what I'm basically saying to that function is that I'm going to receive a parameter that is going to be iterable and its name is yob, but its value count 
is not known yet. So basically just receive as many as parameters that you can inside that YOB iterable. So in that case, I might go inside that function and iterate over the provided YOB, which is the years of birth. And let me actually change this to year of birth that time. So it will be more friendly name to understand for that case. And now I can go inside here and iterate over the year of birth. So we can go here for YOB again in year of births. And then we can go here with print and write something like the following. So let me make this a formatted string that time. And then right here, the age for YOB is, and then let's calculate the age here, current year minus YOB. Okay, and then I will go down here and go and call the get ages. And now I can just basically go ahead and pass as many years that I want. So I can go here 1096, 92, 88, 84, 80, and I have no limit for that. So this is what the single asterisk sign allows us to accomplish. And now if I execute our program, then you can see a perfect result like the following. And I think I must miss here to include that in a curly bracket. So now let's execute our program again and then we should see a perfect result like the following so we see the age for 1996 is 24 and so on until the age of 40 so the case that you want to use the single asterisk sign will be in a case where you don't know how many values you are going to receive for some certain parameter and so you want to include that asterisk sign over there. So until now we were able to understand why do we use single asterisk sign and we told that it is in cases where you don't know the amount of values that you are going to receive for certain parameter. But when do we actually use the double asterisk sign? So the double asterisk sign is used for both cases where you don't know the amount of values that you are going to receive for some parameter and as well as you don't know what parameters you are going to receive in that function. So when you go ahead and use the double asterisk sign, you can basically go ahead and call that get ages and pass whatever parameter that you want to pass. So I can go here and pass name equal to Jim and I can pass here YOB equals to 96 and I can keep continuing on and passing as much as parameters that I can and all those parameters are going to be stored inside the key W args. So the shortened version of the key W args that you always see is actually key worded arguments and this is why you see that in a shortened version that is looking as key w args so let me show you what happens if i go ahead and write inside my function something like the following and i want to go ahead here and iterate over what is inside the key w args so it will be for p in quarks like that and then i will just go ahead and print P. Okay, and then let's execute our program and let's delete the comma here. And so if I execute our program, then you can see that we receive name and YOB. Now the reason this happens, it is because the key WARGS is basically a dictionary where you can iterate over its items. So if I was to change this to dot items, then you can see that it automatically completes me. And the reason this happens, it is because this is by default stored as dictionary. So if I go ahead and execute that program, then you can see that we receive two tuples that we see name and YOB, which they are happened to be the names of the parameters that I used when I called the get ages and the gym and the 96 here are happen to be the values 
that we passed. So we can basically go ahead and turn this function to be more friendly by changing from P to key, comma V. So we receive the key and the value. And then I can go here and write a sentence like the following. So the param was K and then the value was V. And then if I go ahead and execute our program, then we can totally understand the behavior of the key wargs. As you can see here, the param was name and the value was Jim. So this is what is exactly happening here. And we can also see that we have the param was YOB and the value was 1996. And this is what happening here as well. And I want to show you one more example where this double asterisk sign could be useful in classes. So you probably have seen them inside classes more than just functions inside a Python file. So let's actually write a new class from scratch and understand how this could be useful in one more case. Okay, so I'm in a new clean Python file and I just remained with the current year variable. And I'm going to create here a new class and I'm going to name it person. So here I want to simulate a situation where sometimes you don't know what parameters are going to be received in certain cases. So for example, when you go ahead and create a person class, not always you know the parameters that you are going to work with throughout this class. So it might be a better idea in the double underscore init of that function to go ahead and receive an unknown list of parameters. And as we understood until now, we can go ahead and do that with the double asterisk sign and actually call it kwargs like the usual convention that sometimes everyone uses. Now I'm going to assume that we probably want to receive a name for a specific person because that is totally making sense. And so we have name and then keyworded arguments that are going to be provided as well. So inside here, let's actually assign to the self the name. So it will be self.name equals name. And I will go out of my function and create a new person. So it will be person1 equals to person. And let's provide a name here. So it will be name equals to John, for example. And now I can go ahead and provide some extra information because of the key worded arguments that we receive here. So this is the more common cases where you want to use the key worded arguments, all right? So they are going to be seen a lot in the constructors of the classes that you create or you use from an external library. So now I can do here the same approach of basically providing the YOB equals to 1996. And this is a parameter that I can pass and it will be stored here inside the keyworded arguments. And now let's go ahead and inside our constructor, write here something like print keyworded arguments dot items. And if I go ahead and execute our program, then you can see that we receive a dictionary of items with YOB equals to 1996. Now, in some cases, to make it more dynamic, it might be a better idea to go ahead and use the get method of the keyworded arguments. So let's go here and try to make the same assignment like we did with the name. So let's write here self.yob equals to key worded arguments dot get. And this method will try to pull the value from the provided parameter. So if I go ahead and write here yob inside a string, then the get method will try to pull the value of the yob parameter. And if it does not find it, then it will return none. So let's actually comment this out so we can remember this. Returns none if not provided. Okay, so it makes sense to comment this out. And now I will go here and use a new method. And I will call it get age. 
and then we will try to return here current year minus self dot y o b now if i go ahead and try to print whatever is inside the get age method then let's see the results okay so if i execute our program and let's make the terminal bigger then we can see the age of 24 and this is quite great but now let's try to execute our program but delete the yob parameter so if i go ahead and execute this then we can see an error that we cannot use the subtract when we have a non-type value so in that cases the best practice here will be to try to go ahead and actually look up if the self.yob is none or not none. So we can go here and use an if statement and make that to be like if self.yob and then that's it. Okay, so if you go here and use an if statement like the following, basically you are asking Python if there is any value inside the attribute of yob. And so now if I go ahead and try to execute our program, we receive none back. So this result is quite great because sometimes some persons may not provide their date of birth. So it might be a great idea to sometimes return none and sometimes basically return the actual age. So if I was to go back here and provide here yob once again, then the result might be great. But it is important to understand that when we go with something like this, it is considered best practice because you don't crash your program when some person does not provide its year of birth. So it is important to realize that. All right, everyone. So I hope you liked this video and I hope you will find this information useful in your Python projects. So if you have any questions about this video, please consider asking me in the comment section and I will respond. So again, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel for future uploads. I will see you in my next video.